they have to have a lot of security features built in. That's one of the big reasons I like Cisco switches, because they have a lot of security features that can be enabled. Um, they also have to have good performance. Now most switches these days will have good performance, but in addition to cut through switching um, and things like that uh, to reduce the inter uh, switch hop speed, we also have to have quality of service. And quality of service at the switch port level is the ability to distinguish between different types of traffic and prioritize it. So in many cases, uh, even though it seems that there's a, a ton of bandwidth at the local area network level, when we get to the choke points like the uplinks, we want to be able to say, okay, this information is uh, voice and it has to have priority over uh, web traffic, for example. And of course we need to have power over ethernet. Uh, and power over ethernet is uh, it has matured a lot from the, the early standard, but still it's sending power down the wire to the device, whether it's a phone or an access point or a door strike or anything else, uh, a security camera. We really need to have good power over Ethernet, and you really need to figure out what the uh, draw of the devices hanging off the switches are going to be, because these, these switches can come in different uh, power configurations. The Cisco switches can come anywhere from 360 watts uh, to 700, and I think it's 60 watts, all the way up to 1130 watts. And those are for different situations. Sometimes there's high power devices that are going to be hanging off them, where there's going to be a high density of power devices, and you want to make sure you plan out what your density of power devices are going to be, and make sure you get the appropriate uh, power supply on the 2448 port switch. So I like the 2960 because it has all these different uh, power capabilities and the power over Ethernet. It's gig to the desktop. Um, and if you just want to use this a standalone switch, you can. It works great. It's got two 10 gig uplinks um, and either 24 or 48 uh, access layer ports. But you can also, if you have more uh, than 24 or 48 ports in a closet, you can add a stacking module into these switches and that operates it as a single switch. So essentially, it operates as a chassis switch. And then you can uplink out of the switch 10 gig speed up out of the top, 10 gig speed out of the bottom. You get full reliability, you get to manage it as one switch, um, and you really get the best of both worlds from a reliability performance and even a price standpoint. Now, an alternative to this um, in the closet is you can use the 3750 X. Um, it's a layer 3 switch, it's a bit more expensive, it has higher performance. In a lot of cases, we really don't design 3050X into the access layer closet. We'll design 3750X um, if we have a small core distribution uh, capability. And small is a relative term, but these can be stacked together at much higher speed. Whereas a 2960 will have a, a 20 gig um, inter, inter uh, switch uh, backplane speed, we're up to 64 gigabit per second here. Um, so you can see that if you're hanging maybe 10, 20 servers off it, that's great. If you're going to go much beyond that, you really need to go something faster. But as we, the great thing about stacking these switches together is if you uplink the closets to two different switches, because they're being managed as a single switch, we can set up port channeling. And by doing port channeling, we get full utilization of both um, of, of, the, of the 10 gig Ethernet legs. So uh, a 3750X uh, stack is good for, um, for aggregation or, or distribution uh, or for a small core distribution switch. What we're going to end up wanting to use in a lot of cases, uh, because we're going to need a high density of 10 gig connections coming back, is the Nexus 7000. Now, in previous years, we would use a lot of the Catalyst uh, 6500. The 6500 is a really good switch. Um, the issue that I have with the, with the 6500 um, is that most folks have SUP 720s and those can connect to each, uh, each blade. Um, they max out at 40 gigs. And the Nexus 7000 um, can connect a heck of a lot faster than that. So you can put in a number of 10 gig blades and it does layer 3 switching and it takes care of uh, the large, larger number of 10 gig uplinks that you're going to need. So that takes care of the uh, access layer and the distribution layer. 
From a server switching standpoint, we have a completely different architecture. Now, I guess we could just plug all the servers into the Nexus 7000. But that's a pretty expensive way to go. And it's not really needed because what we're talking about doing from a Nexus 7000 is, is providing um, information to the end users. And what really drives a lot of the uh, usage of the 10 gig um, switching is really in between servers themselves and in between servers and storage. So by being able to isolate that off into a server switch into um, like a Nexus 5000, for example, we're able to keep that at a high speed. Now the Nexus 5000 is great. We can um, put a couple of these things in place, put a couple Nexus 5000s in place so that we have certainly uh, reliability and redundancy. And we can connect those over to the Nexus 7000. We can, again, port channel these together. The Nexus 7000 is good because we get a good high speed switch to connect all, all the servers into. And, and that's a great starting point. So we can dual home the servers on that. Now, even though an organization is going to be getting a bunch of 10 gig connected servers, they're still going to have a bunch of 1 gig servers with those 6 to 8 uh, 1 gig connections out. And having all those wires come into one big switch really creates a big wiring mess. So along with the Nexus 7000, they have the ability to hang off extenders off the Nexus 7000 that are the, I guess we're probably going to want to end up doing it this way, um, the Nexus 2000. And these are not standalone switches, they, are, uh, they end up being uh, part of the Nexus uh, 5000 but they are uh, 24 or 48 ports of, uh, of one gig connection. We can put those at the top of the racks and then the servers can just connect up to those. So that gives us provisioning for our 10 gig servers and our one gig servers as well. Now the Nexus 5000 has got something special in it um, that makes it really useful to uh, moving to an, over to an all Ethernet setup. So remember, we talked about that a storage area network and a storage device uh, would hang off this somehow. And these servers can certainly have separate uh, host bus adapters and connect into the storage device through a fiber channel SAN. That's the most expensive and pretty much the highest performing way to do it. A lot of folks opt to use either iSCSI um, or a newer protocol, which is fiber channel over Ethernet. So fiber channel over Ethernet to a server, it just looks like a fiber channel connection. But the Nexus 5000 is unique in that we can connect the storage at fiber channel speed into the Nexus 5000, and the Nexus 5000 will convert it over to fiber channel over Ethernet. And you can get fiber channel over Ethernet host bus adap Ethernet adapters for your servers and be able to combine um, Ethernet data traffic as well as storage traffic on fiber channel over Ethernet. That means you don't have to buy host bus adapters for fiber channel for all your servers, but you still get the same type of performance. So this is the upgrade that we're typically talking about doing for folks. So going to the access layer and doing 10 gigabit uplinks and 1 gig power over Ethernet to, um, to clients, to phones, to uh, access points. Uh, 3750X or a Nexus 7000 stack at the core distribution layer, and then a separate server switch setup, which is uh, Nexus 5000s and then Nexus 2000s, and that'll address uh, the storage, the top rack switching, and um, the other things. So the big picture drive for this changeover is the 1 gig to 10 gig change, because 10 gig um, adapters are about the same as 1 gig adapters now. I'll have a separate discussion on how we can even improve this, this area of the network using Cisco's unified computing system, uh, which is uh, designed to help you optimize that. So look for that.